Hi, I'd like to talk about some of the do's and don'ts of 3D printing. First, garbage won't print, so don't even try. It has to look like something. Second, polygons by themselves will not print because they have no thickness. This should print because it actually has thickness and occupies three dimensions. This one won't print because it has a hole in it right at the end. Either seal off the hole with a polygon or use something like Thicken to give it a solid look on all sides. This still counts as a hole because it's not sealed off at all the corners. The mesh must be watertight. The end of this box still isn't sealed because I can select the polygon and just move it right away. It has to be sealed off at all the corners. All, there can't be any overlapping points, it just has to be sealed off. One point polygons, two point polygons, and stray points that don't belong to any polygon, that's a no-no. Those all have to go. They can't be part of the model that you're going to give to the 3D printer. In this case, these are both two good meshes and they're intersecting. They're not Boolean together. That's fine. These can print. The printer can actually handle this situation. This is bad, however, because in this case, more than two polygons are sharing the same edge. That's not going to fly with the printer. It's just not going to understand that that has to go. In this case, the same thing is going on, except that it's hidden on the inside. There's a polygon right on the inside. You'd never notice it from the outside. That can't be allowed to happen in your model. Don't allow anything like that to happen in your model before you send it off to the printer, or it will get rejected. This one looks perfectly good from the outside, but when you look at it from wireframe mode, you see that there's a polygon floating on the inside. So even though it's a watertight mesh on the outside, the printer is going to get puzzled when it sees this side that has no thickness and it's just not going to know what to do with it. So anything like that has to go. You can't have any floating bits of geometry inside your model. This one looks like a six-sided box, except that one of its sides, when you select it, it reveals that it's actually two sides. Even though if you go to points mode, there's only four points. This polygon was drawn, drawn twice. This happens sometimes. The easiest way to get rid of these overlapping polygons is you just hit shift I to unify and it eliminates all polygons that share the same points. This is actually what you would send to the printer. It's the last step and that's where you triple everything so that there is no doubt for the printer what it should be printing. You send the printer a tripled mesh and it will thank you. So this is going to be the last step, step before you send it off to the printer. So I'd like to add a few final tips. First, make sure your geometry is small enough to print. If the printer's printing bed is about 10 centimeters across, do not try to print a one meter model on it. It's just not gonna happen. Second, hollow meshes are going to be cheaper for you to print than solids because they use less material. If you can get away with a hollow piece of geometry, for example, a statue, definitely consider it because this piece of geometry here is going to be so much cheaper to print than this piece of geometry here. And as a final thought, don't let your walls get too thin. Check with the printer specifications and see how thick or how thin you can allow details to get before they just won't print anymore because it'll fall over or the printer just is not capable of handling that kind of fine level of detail. So that's some basic tips I'd like you to keep in mind as you set off in the world of 3D printing. I'd like to say some notes on this 3D print model for a coaster. First, you'll notice it's pretty high res. This is because in the real world, there is no such thing as a smoothing angle. If the detail is not there, it's just not going to be present in the print. So it has to, it has to exist in the model. If it's not smooth in the model, in the geometry itself, it's not going to be smooth in the print. The second thing I'd like to notice is that this thing was built to scale. It was not built at a meter in size, it was built to scale so that it would print at the size that I wanted it to print, which was coaster size. Third, because the Lightwave logo has parts that are suspended mid-air, yet in the real world these parts would have just dropped off if there was nothing underneath them, I created this honeycomb structure 
to support both the Lightwave logo and connect it to this outer ring. You'll notice that when I hit Select Connected, it did not select anything else on the model but this structure. With 3D printing, it's okay to have intersecting meshes up to a point. I didn't Boolean anything together, I just made sure that these meshes were nice, clean, and watertight. For example, if you look at the ends of this thing, you'll see that they're all sealed off. There are no holes in this mesh. Another thing I'd like to note is that when you intersect two meshes, you're effectively gluing them together. However, it is possible in a 3D printer to have a mesh that is not connected to anything. And when it's not connected to anything, it's possible for that thing, once printed, to be free-moving. In this case, a bearing that can be free-moving through this track, through this 3D printed track. So, if it touches or inter if it intersects the wall, it will be effectively glued to that wall with material used for printing. And if it's not touching the wall at all, it'll be a free-moving part. And I'd also like to point out that everything you see here is tripled. All of this geometry is tripled, and there's no 1 point, 2 point, or 4 point, or n gons present in this model, because that's what the printer needed. I'd like to say a few words about this model, which was a color print done through Shapeways. First, all of the image maps were PNGs. Shapeways will also accept JPEGs and GIF images, however, GIFs restrict you to 256 colors and JPEGs can have compression artifacts, so I decided to use PNGs for the maximum quality of textures. Another attribute is that these textures are all UV mapped. There is no planar mapping, no cylindrical mapping, no cubic mapping. These are just UV mapped textures on this model. In addition, everything is tripled. There is no one-point polys, two-point polys. Everything is just triangles on this model. Another thing I'd like to note is that to lower the cost of printing this model, I made him hollow. I used Thicken to create an inner surface on the original geometry instead of sealing off the bottom of the torso. What this meant was that less material was used to print him, so he was a lot cheaper to print. Now, if he was truly hollow, he wouldn't rest on this post so easy because there'd be nothing to attach to this post. So another thing that I did with this model was I created geometry on the inside, a support structure that would intersect with this pedestal geometry and grab onto the inside of, of uh, his skin, his thickened skin. So you can see that this support structure goes all the way up into the neck and from there I just trusted that the head would be able to support itself. But the intention of the support structure was to keep the alien upright, give it a little structural integrity, while at the same time using a minimum of material on the inside. I made sure that the holes, the, that the holes between the branches were big enough so that excess material in the head, shoulders, and torso could fall out the bottom. Those are called escape holes. And with Shapeways, the less material you use, the cheaper the model will be to print. I hope these tips have been of some use, and happy printing!